All right, everybody. Welcome to Last One to Katahdin Ends. It's a time for another exciting adventure on the way to Mount Katahdin. Today we're going to talk about, if I knew then, what I know now. This was really not an episode about regrets. I have no regrets. And there isn't anything that I did, I feel like, I really should have done differently. Like it would have been a real game changer if I had. I did my homework. I had a good uh, shakedown trip of a, over a month to you know know if my gear was going to work, know if my body was going to work. But uh, I still <laughs> learned some things. I'm going to share some of that with you now. If I knew then what I know now, what would I do differently? Now, first of all, on the practical side, I would not carry a Garmin. I had an in-reach mini. And it cost me $350 and I paid something like, I don't know, $50, $60 a month for a subscription. And it was not worth having. Why? Why? Because there's really good cell phone service, almost everything. And if you start with a new phone, and I wish I had, I got a new phone about halfway through just for the battery, just so I had a really good battery in my phone. Uh, you can pretty much take care of what you would do with the Garmin. The trouble with Garmin is in the Appalachian Trail, it's the green tunnel that the darn machine can't see through the leaves, has a heck of a time connecting with the satellites, spends all day trying to connect and just totally wears out the battery in an afternoon. And so you're constantly needing to recharge that battery. What most people did with the their minis was turn them on in the morning, send a, you know, I'm okay message as they started their day. And then once they heard it connect and send, they turn the sucker off. They do the same thing at night. And quite often around the shelter, maybe it's a little bit more open and you get that message through. But uh, I would not take one of these devices. It made the folks at home happy to know I had it. But even for them, it really wasn't all that useful. It's not like some places where they can you can set it to send a message every hour or so and people can follow your little dots on a map because it just can't make contact. Uh, I would leave the guidebook at home and just use my phone uh, because that's what I ended up doing. I carried that guidebook for half the trip. Well, I carried half the guidebook for half the trip. And the guidebook's great and it's really handy for the folks at home to use to follow your trip. As you tell them where you are, they can find it in the guidebook. And uh, that's real helpful. But to have it with on the trail, I just didn't use it. Uh, maybe you would and some people did do both, they found the guidebook good for planning a few days ahead and the, and the online app I used far out to do their actual navigation during the day. But I just found that I just used the far out app. Uh, I got a sleeping bag liner about a third of the way through the trip. I wish I'd started with it. You know why? To keep my sleeping bag clean. I could not believe, I mean, quite often I use my sleeping bag just as a, as a blanket and slept on top of my pad and my pad quickly got filthy. And I realized, well, my sleeping bag's probably filthy too. So to have a light bag liner uh, that you can wash when you wash your other clothes, really good idea. Plus uh, it adds a layer of warmth. So a lighter sleeping bag and a uh, bag liner. Now I wish I'd had just the right bag. I brought the bag I had, which was way warmer than I needed, which means it was heavier than I needed. And I just had spent so much money on stuff, on a tent and a pack and a good stove and so on, that uh, I had a good sleeping bag, a good down bag. It was just warmer than it needed to be. I wish I'd had just the right bag. I used the bag liner and extra clothing to uh, you know, extend its, uh, its comfort range. I wish I'd spent money on that, on like a 30 or 40 degree bag and then supplemented that with other clothing and junk. I'd have done that. I wish I'd started with an umbrella. I ended up getting an umbrella because my raincoat was too warm. I sweated so much in the raincoat that I might as well not have been wearing it. A lot of people didn't. They just didn't wear any rain gear. That was fine unless it was cold. I found if it was raining, it was always cold. So I wanted some protection. I found that umbrella worked just great. I didn't have the most expensive umbrella either. So you don't necessarily have to spend uh, $75 on an umbrella and a carrier for it on your pack. You can get by with less, but you know, experiment with that. I would actually get one designed for backpacking. 
because eventually you might enjoy that silver side for use on sunny days. I had a ground cloth, but it wasn't quite big enough for my tent. I carried it to protect my brand new $400 big Agnes, uh, you know, ultralight tent from the ground more than anything else. And, uh, but it was a tad undersized. I wish it had been bigger. And uh, later in the trip, as uh, you know, after 150 nights in the woods, that floor starts to get worn anyway. And I would have started putting that ground cloth inside the tent uh, since uh, the floor was really getting past the point where it was totally waterproof. So a big enough ground cloth to cover the whole inside of your tent, that would be my advice. I, don't th I wouldn't buy a, uh, a footprint though, because they're too darn expensive. Uh, get yourself a piece of plastic. There's a bunch of different types you can find that are the right weight. Get a piece of Tyvek from a contractor and wash it a couple of times with the washing machine to soften it up and uh, cut it to size. I, I, I don't know about a bear canister. I didn't carry one. There are some times I wish I had, not for the bears, uh, but so I had something to sit on. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, I didn't have to hang. And uh, I hung pretty religiously. I was pretty good about doing that. I come from bear country. They're used to hanging food. It's easy to hang the small amount of food you're carrying, but it is kind of a pain in the butt to do. And it, it, sometimes it's really hard to find a tree you can hang in. That was the hard part. I never had trouble with bear. And in my estimation, as a uh, canoe paddle or in bear country, I was never at a campsite that looked like uh, bears uh, frequented it, you know, visited it frequently. That just means that people we're good at keeping the bears from getting fed. Um, I Maybe I would get more uh, Nero's and carry less food. I get food more frequently because I usually left town with 10, 12 pounds worth of food for about five days worth of hiking. And I probably could have done three days worth of food and had less weight. Bubba, let me tell you, less weight, man. I wish I'd spent more time dropping weight sooner. I wish I'd taken the advice of experienced hikers that said, don't take anything that has only got one use. <laughs> uh, and I, even though I ended up with only 18 pounds as my base weight, I wished it was 17 and a half or 16 or 15. Uh, you will not be sorry that you got rid of stuff unless it's stuff that keeps you warm and dry. <laughs> That's another story. So what about the philosophical things? Well, you know what? I found out everybody gets blisters and that, that helped me a lot. Uh, everybody falls down and finding out that you're not that different, even though you're 65 years old than the other people, that's a big comfort. And so after the first week, I had some blisters. They were not terrible. But when I found out that the big dogs who were actually the young kids, they had blisters too. I was like, oh, well, how do you like that? Maybe I'm not that dumb. And uh, one time I had a pretty serious fall. I didn't really get hurt, but it was could have got hurt. And I talked to a young guy that I've been hiking with off and on. He said, yeah, I fell down today, too. I hurt my hand pretty bad. I'm like, oh, OK. So uh, it makes it easier to accept the limitations. Um, so uh, I spent a lot of time feeling bad about being the last one. I mean, I really thought I'd be the last one at Katahdin. And a, one of the young folks said, well, you know, the last one at Katahdin wins. You're, he's, this was The thinking there is your trip lasted longer. And by the end, you love this trip. You do, you're gonna love it. If you stick with it, you'll love it and hate it, you're gonna love it. But accepting my limitations, learning to do that. People, the first month and last month are real hard. Now the first month makes sense, right? Because you're just learning the ropes and getting into shape. And uh, so not a big uh, surprise. Uh, people get hurt that first month. They get shin splints and other tendon kind of problems, soft tissue injuries repetitive motion injuries, a lot of that happens and people lose time or they go home. The last month is hard because New Hampshire is terrible. It's steep, it's eroded and uh, those downhills are so dicey and uh, you are gonna be lucky to hike faster than one mile an hour. And I wish I had really understood that uh, at the end. I wasn't surprised at the first month I was slow, uh, but at the last month, to be as slow as it was, I was not prepared for that. I wish I'd been better prepared for how hard that last month, especially how hard New Hampshire is. 
I, I wish I'd talked to people more and especially that I'd taken pictures of more people because I don't remember them that well, you know, and uh, talk to more people, take more pictures. I was pretty good about talking to people, but I wish I'd done more. It's just a little bit shy, you know, and uh, uh, you will find people are so friendly because we're all in it together, we're all through hiking. And as somebody completely diametrically different from you is gonna feel like a brother or a sister, especially once you get uh, like past Harper's Ferry, you made it that far. You know, you belong to an elite group of real potential finishers. I would enjoy the ride more. I would do more blue blazes. I mean, there were times I could have taken a side trail to an overlook and I didn't. I didn't. I wish I'd, I'd gone to, you know, Charlie's um, Bunyan. And I didn't. It's a little side trail. I was tired. I was worried about making time. I wish I'd gone slower and just hiked longer. And uh, I didn't exactly rush. You know why? Because I couldn't. But I was worried about keeping up with the youngsters. And uh, I started early. And I wish I'd finished later, taking more breaks, taking time for blue blazers and uh, that sort of thing. So slower and longer, really, truly. I wish I'd night hiked more. I night hiked in the last week of my trip, I finally night hiked. And I wish I had done more night hiking earlier in the trip. So, uh, yeah. I, I hiked with friends and family, so that's not a regret. Uh, make time for that. It will take time. They will be slow because like when my brother met me at Harper's Ferry, I'd been hiking already for a couple of months and he hadn't hiked at all. Be prepared for your friends and family to not be up to speed that, you know, a mile an hour for them is going to be pretty good. And uh, so be prepared to just take your time and enjoy the time with them. Carve out some time for that. Make room in your schedule for that. You're going to lose time, but that's worth making time for. I took a vacation and it's worth getting off the trail for, you know, more than a day and uh, spend time with family. Go ahead, go to that wedding, you know, do that. Cause, uh, It'll make it that much more sweet when you get back on the trail. And don't worry about missing the people you were hiking with because they're going to take time off too. You will meet them again. There were people I met on the first day I didn't see again for till four months later. Then there they were. So you will see those people again. What about the most useful advice I received? Well, I followed Bigfoot on YouTube. He said, don't start in March. Man, that was really good advice. It's not enough to be prepared. You have to be lucky. And uh, knowing that, knowing that it takes a little bit of luck, uh, that will help you. That is going to help you if you know it takes a little bit of luck. Because uh, you have to not get hurt. You have to not get sick. And you got to have weather that's just not so bad that it makes you want to quit. Uh, have low expectations for New Hampshire. Just prepare to be slow. Be prepared for that. People say, oh, yeah, it's harder. People, it is so much harder. You will not believe it until you see it. I'm not saying it's not worth doing, but it is uh, relentlessly steep. And uh, my knees still hurt from it. And I was not the only one. Everybody I talked to, young and old, felt the same. Now, I'll tell you something else. I got good advice from this little girl in a tent on uh, just past the border going into Maine. So she was just inside of Maine. I had just entered me. She was southbound. She was on her way out. Little bitty girl in his tent, camped by the side of the trail. And as I went by, she spun around and looked out the back of the tent. And basically, she said, enjoy Maine. Maine is the funnest state of all. So until next time, happy trails until we meet again.